Have you ever wondered if you could create a better argument? A lot of times the effectiveness of an argument comes down to the structure. So the way that the data that you have for support and the claim that you're trying to make, the way that those two are interrelated can really make or break your argument. There are actually six different common argument structures that we can look at in order to see that relationship at play. They form the acronym GASCAP, Generalization, Analogy, Sign, Cause, uh, authority and principle. So let's look at these argument strategies one at a time. Gas cap, generalization, analogy, sign, causal, authority, and principle. So what you can expect from this particular screencast lecture is first we'll just go over an overview of argument structures and after that we'll go over each argument strategy with some examples. So here we go. First of all, an overview just of arguments in general. Remember that all arguments have claims. In another video, we talk about claims of fact, claims of value, and claims of policy. I'll put the little link up here so you can see that one as well. And remember, all arguments have some type of support, some sort of support. And you can have a claim, but in order to have an argument, there has to be something to back it up. Okay, So we have some sort of support for whatever that claim might be. And there are different ways that we can structure the relationship between these two things, between the claim and the support. That's really what this lecture is going to be looking at, is the relationship between the claim and the support. So let's look at an argument from generalization. Now be careful here because a lot of times when people hear generalization in an argument sense, a lot of times they're thinking about the logical fallacy of a hasty generalization or an overgeneralization. But really, uh, as a tool, this is something that's very effective if done correctly. Okay, so if you hear someone say, oh, that's just a generalization, that's not what we're referring to here. Here what we're referring to is that what uh, a generalization strategy assumes that what is true of a well-chosen sample is likely to hold true for a larger group or population, or that certain things consist consistent with the sample can be inferred of the group or population. So if you think of this, uh, here's an example. Communication students at Miracosta are well-spoken, so we can conclude that communication students in California are well-spoken. And just if you're not in California, Miracosta is in California, just so you know. Okay, so what you have here is a well-chosen sample, so a sample of community college students with a particular major. And then from there, you're able to generalize to a larger population. So we're saying it was hopefully big enough, it was specific enough, and it was well representative enough to really be able to make this sort of generalization. It's not perfect, but uh, this would be the way that you could structure this argument. Also, any polling data used in elections or any survey data. Remember, you have a sample size, and then you're trying to make predictions about what the larger population would be believing or would be feeling or how they would be acting or any of those sorts of things. You're trying to gain information by having a representative sample. And you're trying to gain information about the larger population. So this is the generalization strategy. The analogy strategy looks at two situations that have important similarities so we can say that they will have similar results or should be treated similarly. Okay, so this is an analogy strategy. So you're saying that uh, one thing and another thing have such similarities that since we know something about group one, we can infer that there's something about group two that's probably going to be similar. So for example, uh, this would be court cases that look at precedent. So if you have a court case that has likely similarities for a particular ruling and they're able to say, well, we had another case that was very much like this in the past, this is how we ruled on that particular case. So because of that, we can say that we should rule in a similar way for this current case that we're looking at now. Another example would be communication majors on the San Alejo campus are good speakers. So communication majors on the Oceanside campus are good speakers. Okay, so here we're looking at two different groups. So uh, Miracosta College has two campuses. And what we would be able to say is that communication majors on both campuses probably share similar traits in terms of being a good speaker. If the first one were to be true, we believe that there's enough similarity between those two groups that the analogy would hold true. Argument from sign. This is the notion that certain types of evidence are symptomatic of some wider principle or outcome. I'll give you an example here. So if you go to the doctor and they examine your symptoms, and then they determine that you have the flu, right? So the doctor didn't really know that you had the flu. The doctor just sees all of the symptoms. The doctor just sees those signs. So we go back to our definition here. He sees the evidence that are symptomatic of a wider principle or outcome. So the doctor can see that you're coughing, sneezing, whatever it is, and the doctor can, and maybe you have a fever. The doctor sees all of those together, and then the doctor is able to say, because of all these symptoms, we can predict, or we can, we can say that there's this wider principle of you having the flu flu that's going on. Another example, flowers are blooming, so we can determine that it must be spring. Okay, so we see all these flowers. Now it's not, the flowers are not causing spring, 
right? Just like those symptoms didn't cause the flu, it's actually the other way around. So spring is what's, you know, the warmer weather and everything is causing those flowers to bloom. Well, we have this sign of flowers blooming, so then we can determine that it must be spring. Causal arguments. Notice this is not casual. This is causal, like cause and effect. Arguing that the result was caused by something else. Okay, so here's an example. So students studied hard, so they did well on their test. Okay, so we have one thing that's leading to another. And this is, you know, you could also say that students who um, wore shoes did well on their test. But notice how one of these is stronger than the other. And one of these, even though they both are probably true, right, one of them is more likely to be causing the other. And the likelihood of your audience to believe it is really where we find strength in our arguments. Next is authority. Arguing that because an important and respected person said it, that we should trust them and give strength to the argument. Okay, so here if we have someone who's an expert in the field and they say a particular statement on something in their field, it's more likely to be believed as true. So for example, a successful business person gives you some tips on how to run your startup. Okay, so you've got this business that you're trying to figure out and you see someone who's done it before, you're going to give some authority to that person in terms of what it is that they're saying that you should do. Last is our argument from principle. The argument from principle says that we're locating a principle that's widely regarded as valid and showing that a situation exists in which this principle applies. Okay, so here's an example. It's wrong to cheat on a test, and because you believe this, you don't cheat on any exams at Miracosta. Okay, so you have a principle that uh, ideally the person who's listening to the argument would be agreeing with, and then you have something that falls in line with that principle uh, that you would then be trying to persuade them to believe, act, or, or do. Okay, so this is our uh, overall structure here. First of all, we talked about the argument structures, and then after that we talked about each of the elements of gas cap, and we had examples for each one. So again, it was generalization, analogy, sign, causal, like cause and effect, and authority and principle. This is the acronym GASCAP, and these are the six common argument strategies.